GitOps is amazing, especially for those using Kubernetes. Yet, GitOps poses significant problems when it comes to execution of tasks that should be performed after deployment. For example, we cannot run functional tests through workflows or pipelines like GitHub Actions or Jenkins. GitOps broke CI-CD processes, and we need to fix that right now. Let me explain. Imagine the following steps. We check out code, we run unit tests, we build and push a new container image, we deploy a new release, and we run functional tests. Now, the whole process is often more complicated than that. Still, those few steps should be enough for me to make the point I'm about to make. Now, if you're practicing GitOps, the step that deploys the code is actually not deploying anything, but instead it is making changes to manifests and pushing them to a repo. From there on, Argo CD or Flux would realize that there is a change to the desired state and make changes to the cluster so that the actual state is the same. GitOps requires rethinking CICD to accommodate the coupled deployment processes. You see, the problem is in whichever steps we might have in our workflows after the deployment. How do we, for example, run functional tests or do whatever else needs to be done once a new release is running? We cannot let workflow run continue its course after the changes are pushed to Git since there is a decoupled process that does the deployment or to be more precise, reconciliation between the desired state or what is in Git and the actual state or what is in a cluster. We cannot know for sure when will that process start, nor when it will end. So we have to remove those steps from that specific workflow run and probably execute it separately. Hence, we have two, if not more, workflows with decoupled and asynchronous processes in between. We need a way to trigger that second workflow run, and the only way we can do that is by monitoring the state of resources and executing some kind of a trigger when those we are interested in are created or updated. Here's an example. I will change the source code of the app and push the changes to the Git repo. If we open GitHub Actions, we can see that the CI workflow run was executed. The workflow ended up pushing changes to a manifest and stopped. There was nothing else for it to do since that's where Argo CD kicks in. It detected changes to the repo and synchronized them into the cluster. However, a few moments later, a new workflow run was executed even though we did not push anything to any Git repo. How did that happen? What executed that workflow run? How did it know that a new release of the application was deployed to the cluster? The answer to those and a few other questions is in event-based workflows and Argo events. A simple way to describe Argo events would be to say that it orchestrates workflow or pipeline runs. It does that orchestration by monitoring specific events and triggering processes. Almost all of us are already using such architecture. When we push a change to a Git repo, that change is an event that triggers workflow runs. That's how most of CI or CD processes are executed. That's what we've been doing for decades, except that it was SVN or CVS back in the days when I was young. However, changes to Git repositories are only a fraction of events our systems are generating. There are events generated in queues and pub subs like AWS SQS, Azure Service Bus, Nuts, Kafka, Redis, and others. Then there are Kubernetes events, file events, and many, many, many others. Our systems are generating events all the time. We can monitor those and use them to trigger some processes. Now, I will not go deeper into Argo events. Actually, I won't explain Argo events at all. I already did that in that video over there, and I do not like repeating myself. Today, I want to focus on solving the GitOps problem and figure out how to connect broken workflow runs. More specifically, we will explore how to execute whatever needs to be executed after GitOps tools create or update something in our clusters. Once we have Argo events installed, we still need to set up a few things specific to the events we will be watching and triggering. To begin with, we need to create a service account, a role, and a role binding so that we have the permissions to observe or operate resources we are interested in. 
Here's an example. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, there should be no need for an explanation. We are creating a service account, Argo events, that will have permissions to do anything with deployments and replica sets. Now, if that is confusing and you need more detailed explanation, all I will say is that you won't find it here. You will not find it here. It's not here. I'm assuming that you are not new to Kubernetes. Otherwise, go away. Go somewhere else. Typically, we should push those manifests to Git and let Argo City take care of the rest. But we won't. In the interest of getting to the important part as fast as possible, I will perform a cardinal sin of applying them directly with kubectl. Don't judge me. Next, we need an event source. Event source resources are essentially configurations that define how to consume events, transform them into cloud events, and send them to the Argo events event bus. In this specific case, we are using Argo event service account we created earlier so that the event source can observe resources we're interested in. Event sources can be many. We could consume events from a bunch of sources. Here comes the list. AMQP, AWS SNS, AWS SQS, Azure Service Bus, Azure Q Storage, Calendar, Emitter, File, GCP PubSub, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket Cloud, Bitbucket Server, Kafka, Minio, MQTT, Nuts, NC, NSQ, Redis, Redis Streams, Resource, Webhook, and Pulsar. I got tired just by reading those and I'm certainly not going to go through all of them in more detail. Mostly because only one, only one of those matters for today's story. We want to observe specific Kubernetes resources, so that manifest defines resource that I named up. That's an arbitrary name that does not matter much. What does matter is that it will watch deployments. Specifically, it will generate a cloud event every time a deployment is created, that's the add, or updated inside the ATM namespace. In other words, we are generating cloud events whenever specific resources in Kubernetes are created or updated. We are not specifying what to do with those events just yet. We'll do that soon. For now, let's apply that manifest. Next in the line are sensors, like that one. Sensors are essentially triggers that we can use to specify what to do when an event is detected. They contain two major sections. First, there are dependencies. That's where we are saying that it depends on the up event source we applied earlier. Most of the action is in triggers. We could have specified that we would like to start an agro workflow run or to instantiate an AWS Lambda or to send a message to Nuts or Kafka or to create a Kubernetes resource or to send it to logs or to create a function in OpenWhisk, or to send a message to a Slack, or an Azure event, or to create a Pulsar topic. We could also build our own trigger. Now, we will not use any of those since all we need is to send an HTTP request to GitHub Actions. So we are using HTTP trigger. The URL and method fields should be self-explanatory. The payload section is an area of instructions that essentially say, get data from there and edit as a payload. Since triggering GitHub Actions workflows requires an event type, and given that I like providing flexibility, instead of hard coding it, we are getting it from one of the labels of the deployment. Also, given that it might be useful to have the whole definition of the resource that triggered the actions, we are passing it as client payload resource field. We'll see how to use that one soon. Further on, we are adding the accept and authorization headers with the latter one retrieved from the GitHub secret for, well, obvious reasons. Finally, the trigger should be considered successful if the destination returns 200, 201, or 204 response. It's all pretty straightforward, yet, as you will see soon, it does not work. It fails miserably. Nevertheless, I'm not supposed to reveal the disaster, so please ignore what I just said, and let's just apply that manifest. That's it. We are ready to see it in action and experience the disaster that it will create. It will be horrible, trust me. I will simulate the development by changing something in the source code. It's a silly demo, so there is not much to it, yet enough to demonstrate the glue required to run workflows or pipelines. Once the code changed, all we have to do is push it to Git. And that's it. That's where humans stop 
and machines take over. The action starts with the GitHub actions, even though we'd get the same result with Jenkins or Argo workflows or Tekton or any other similar solution. Now we can see that the CI workflow was executed. And while it is running, we can take a quick look at its definition. It checks out the code, it prepares Docker to build the images, it runs fake unit tests and it builds and pushes a new container image. What comes now, right now, is the important part that differs from what we were doing typically in the past. Instead of deploying the new container image to the cluster, we are modifying the deployment manifest by changing the image to the one we just built. And after that, committing and pushing changes back to the repo. In other words, that workflow is not deploying anything but updating manifests in the Git repo. After that, it cannot do anything else simply because that workflow has no idea, no idea at all who or what will apply those changes, nor when will those changes be applied. That workflow is completely, completely decoupled from deployment processes, which in our case will be done by Argo CD. Now, we can confirm that's what really happened by pulling the latest changes from Git. We should see from the output that silly demo deployment YAML was modified, thus confirming that the first workflow run was successful. From now on, Argo CD should detect that change and we should see new pods deployed to the cluster. Judging by the age, those are indeed new pods created by Argo CD as a result of changing the image in the deployment manifest. The second process worked as expected. Now, chances are that so far you haven't seen anything new. You probably already know how to trigger workflow or pipeline runs through commits to Git and you're likely already using Argo CD or Flux to sync the desired state storing it and the actual state in your Kubernetes clusters. What comes next is new and we can see it by going back to the GitHub repo and opening the actions tab. We can see that the new workflow functional test was executed. That's the workflow triggered by Argo events once it detected that a deployment was created or updated. That is also the disaster I mentioned earlier. Instead of triggering one workflow run that executes functional tests, we got plenty. What we did is pointless. There is no good reason why we would run functional tests many times for a single change. Yet Argo events did not do anything wrong either. As a matter of fact, Argo events triggered all those workflows correctly. We said that we would like to trigger a workflow every time a deployment is created or updated. So that's what Argo events did, even though it might look like it went berserk. You see, it's not only us who are modifying Kubernetes resources, Kubernetes itself is modifying them as well. It adds annotations, statuses, and quite a few other things to resources. Otherwise, without statuses, we would not know what's going on. We can blame deployment itself for not having a clear indication when its children resources are operational. On the other hand, Filters offered by Argo events are terrible, really, really terrible. So that complicates the situation as well. Nevertheless, I do have a solution that prevents multiple events firing due to Kubernetes updating resources. We'll get to it soon. For now, let's take a quick look at the workflow definition that was executed. There's not much going on there. We are outputting client payload resource. We are not doing anything with it, but we could. If that run would need some additional information, it could extract it from the resource passed to it. I just wanted to assure that Argo events could pass any information to a workflow run, including the resource that initiated it. Below it, we can see the running functional test message. I was too lazy to add real tests. I'm sure you know how to test your releases. Also, please note that it does not have to run only tests. That workflow should execute whichever tasks you need to run after each new deployment. Now, let's get back to solving the problem with too many events being triggered. As you hopefully know, and I really hope that you do know, Kubernetes deployments create replica sets which manage pods. Every time we make a change to a deployment, a new replica set is created. That means that we can be watching for events that create replica sets without the need to watch for updates. As a result, if everything turns up as expected, Argo events should trigger a GitHub Actions workflow run every time we create or update a deployment. It's an indirect 
route towards solving the issue we're having. Here's the diff between the current and the new version of the event source. As we can see, the only change is that we are now watching for replica sets instead of deployments and that updates should not trigger events. Let's apply the new version of the event source. Next, we will modify the source code. Finally, we'll push the changes to the repo. Now we need to wait until the CI workflow run is executed and Argo CD detects and synchronizes changes to the cluster. Once all that happens, we should have a new functional test workflow run executed. So let's fast forward a few minutes. And now if you take a look at the functional test workflow runs, we can see that only one, only one was executed. So mission accomplished. Or to quote Borat, one of the biggest philosophers of our time, great success. Here's what happened. We changed the source code and pushed it to Git. One of GitHub Action's workflows is configured to run on every commit to the main line, so our run was executed. It checked out the code, it ran unit tests, it built an image and pushed it to a registry, it modified the, the image in the deployment manifest, and it pushed the changes back to the repo. That's the end of that workflow run. It did not deploy anything, nor it executed any task we might want to run after deployments. Argo CD is unaware of what we do in workflows. It does not care about any of them. It's decoupled from other processes. All it cares is the drift between the desired and the actual state. So once changes to the manifest were pushed to the repo, it detected drift between the desired state, the manifest and the actual state or the Kubernetes resources. It did whatever it needs to do to remove the drift by making changes to the actual resources. That's GitOps equivalent of a traditional deployment. Just as Argo CD was unaware of the workflow run that made changes to the manifest stored in Git, it is also unaware of what needs to be done afterwards. It does not care. It has a single job and it does not care about jobs done by anyone else. Even source, an Argo events component, also unaware of GitHub Actions and Argo CD, detected a new replica set that was created by the deployment and triggered an HTTP request to GitHub Actions workflow called functional test. That resulted in a run of that workflow that executed functional tests. And all that is a simple version of the process and I will leave it up to you to expand it to your own needs. Here's the key takeaway for today. Argo events effectively solves GitOps post-deployment challenges by intelligently triggering workflows. That's what you need to remember. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.